Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video set. This is the third video on section 10.2. In this video we're going to focus on finding the length of a parametric curve. So given a set of parametric equations, can we derive a new arc length formula? Alright, well let's take a look. Alright, so we're going to go through this derivation just like we did for regular Cartesian functions y equals f of x. If you recall, our process there was to cut a little slice uh, out of our curve and if we cut that thing small enough, we could reasonably approximate it to be a straight line. And if it was a straight line, we drew our little right triangle here and said, look, this piece looks like a little change in x, this piece here looks like a little change of y, and then a little slice of our arc length should look something like the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. That's what we did before, and that's going to be exactly our starting point here as well. We'll look at a little approximation for a little slice of arc length to be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Now, in the last case, we factor out a dx squared or potentially factor out a dy squared and rearrange that to get our formula. In this case, x and y are both going to be functions of t. So we have x as some function of t, we have y as some function of t which means that if x is a function of t, then dx, the differential, can be written as the derivative of x with respect to t. Remember, I'm going to use that x dot notation, dt. That's the differential of dx with respect to t. Similarly, I could rewrite y, or the dy, as y dot, so the derivative of y with respect to t, dt. And you know, if we use that Leibniz notation, for that derivative, instead of that dot, we could also write this as dy dt dt, and maybe that might help with your intu intuition a little bit because it looks like those dt's kind of cancel out here. But really, this is the definition of the differential. So now we have these two representations for dx and dy. Let's just plug those into our expression. Now we have ds is equal to the square root of, well, here I have x dot, the derivative of x with respect to t, dt, quantity squared, plus y dot, the derivative of y with respect to t, dt, quantity squared. All right, what I'm going to do there is square each of these pieces, and then I'll have a dt squared in both pieces, so I'll factor that out. It looks like I'll get x dot squared, that quantity, plus y dot squared, and then outside of here I have a dt squared. And my last step here, kind of clean things up, I'm going to rewrite those derivatives in terms of that Leibniz notation. That'll match the book a little bit better here. So I have the derivative of x with respect to t squared plus the derivative of y with respect to t squared. And I'll just pull that dt squared outside of my radical to be dt. So this is a nice expression for the length of that small curve. Now if I want to find the total length of the curve, all I do is add that up continuously. And I get this thing, which is really my formula for finding the arc length of a set of parametric equations. So all I have to do is give an x of t and y of t, calculate the derivatives with respect to t, and plug them in this. And of course I'm integrating this over some range of t values now from t equals something to t equals something, and be careful because that's not necessarily the same as the range of x values. All right, let's look at a specific example. All right, find the length of this curve, x equals t squared minus 4t, and y equals t to the fifth, on the interval from 1 to 4. Now I strongly encourage you at this point to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can actually do these calculations and work this problem out on yourselves. I'll give you a quick second to pause it, and then we'll carry on. All right, hopefully you had a chance to pause this and work through the problems. Now let's see my solution. The things I'm going to need are, I'm going to need to calculate what dx dt is. In this case, that's going to be 2t minus 4. I'm also going to need to calculate dy dt. In this case, that's going to be 5t to the fourth. Now I'm going to plug these values into my formula. For the arc length here, I'm integrating over my range of t values, so from t equals 1 to t equals 4. The square root of 2t minus 4 squared plus 5t to the fourth squared, 
dt. Now, we can certainly expand this and see what we can do with the integral, but remember, just like in 8.1, a lot of these arc length integrals are going to turn out to be very challenging. So one thing we can do here is just use our calculators or use Mathematica to go ahead and calculate the solution. So here I have the answer or the, the integral all typed in and ready to go. So you can compare the two. I'm integrating from 1 to 4, this integrand. I'm just going to evaluate that with Mathematica. And you'll notice I get a pretty ugly result. It actually doesn't evaluate this. In this case, this integral is actually very challenging even for Mathematica. So what can I do? Instead of finding that exact integral value, I can do n integrate to find a very good approximation of that. So there my value is 1023.07. That's going to be my approximate value for the length of this curve. And I also want to take a moment real quick to go look back at that curve to see if that value makes sense, 1023. And here I can see that I'm going from a range of x values that looks like it's, you know, it's between 0 and negative 4 here. But my y values go from 0 up to more than 1,000. So it makes sense the length of this curve would be a little bigger than 1,000. All right, so in this video, we've gone ahead and derived the new formula to find the arc length of parametric equations, and we've shown an example of that. Go ahead and work out the next couple problems in the homework. Thanks for your time.